Frank Beaver Show, a weekly look at the activities and game highlights of the Highland Park Scots with head coach Frank Beavers and Eddie Clinton. Brought to you by Abio Adlita Realtors, Lincoln Property, Sparkman Hillcrest. This is ranked number one, and last uh, two years we've played Old Trinity from the Hershey-Lewis Bedford area real close, and they've always been ranked pretty highly. So uh, it seems like Duncanville plays the best teams better. So hopefully we'll play our best game tonight and might pull up an upset. The fact that Duncanville has never lost to a Highland Park football team, have you used this psychologically on your kids this week? I don't believe I've said anything about it. Uh, now, I've been at Duncanville eight years, and, you know, we played uh, Highland Park there two or three years, and we did beat them. But they were way down, and that wasn't Coach Beaver's teams and everything, so I don't think that's going to give us much of an advantage tonight. Eddie, how about the Highland Park Scots? As we said earlier, Knox, 2-0 in the year for Highland Park, running on offense. They come out of the beer, as usual, behind uh, Frank Beaver's, any Frank Beaver's team. Defensively, they stun a lot. They run the flex. Before the game, we talked to defensive coordinator Randy Emery and asked him the obvious question, how's it been coaching without Frank Beavers? Let's check the offense for you. Quarterback King Hall and Brian Glasscock, the standouts. On defense, that 4-3 flex that we talked about. Tackle Richard Tuma, number 49, and number 83, Philip Worthen. You might also look for the linebacking core led by Henry Miller. Before the game, we asked the obvious question. Randy Emery, defensive coordinator, acting head coach, how do you get along without Frank Beavers at school this week? Randy, I guess the obvious question is how have you guys functioned this week uh, with Frank being in the hospital? Well, we've just carried on like we normally do. Wayne and I are taking care of the defense, and Don and Jim have picked up the slack on the offense. Now, I've been working with them just a little bit, but not much. <clears throat> now, what about during the ball game? Is it a chance for you guys to express yourself, or will you follow what Frank has done? Uh, I think you'll probably see a combination of the two. I, you know, I think uh, Don's going to call the offense with Wayne and I giving him some suggestions. Uh, I'm sure it'd be very similar to the way Frank would have called a ball game. What about the team? Can you read them? You guys talk about gunning a team up. I wouldn't think against Duncanville you'd be fired up, say, for a mosquito, that type of thing. Do you think with Frank's absence they'll really be gunned up? Mm, not particularly. I don't think so. Uh, I think our kids will play pretty good. They, they play pretty good all the time. Uh, I don't think it'll be a deal where they come out and win one with, for the Gipper. <laughs> okay. Scott won the toss. They elected to kick. We'll be back in just a few moments for tonight's opening kickoff. It takes years of practice and dedication to be the best. That's a lesson well learned at Lone Star Cadillac. We've concentrated on every detail of our service worked hard to give you a wider selection of new Cadillacs in a downtown location that's in tune with your needs. Experience is the key. After nearly 50 years, you can depend on Lone Star Cadillac for an excellent performance every time. kicking off to Duncanville in the white get and headgears, white jerseys, and white pants. Switch Sweeney, number 54, you remember him from last year. A big season, and he gets things underway with a booming kick into the end zone, and coming out with the football is Dyron Lynch. Lynch to the 10, to the 15, has running room 20. Lynch, let's go to the Well, he had running room, Eddie. And there is the first key break. Tom Harrington came up with the ball. What a strange play. Not hit, just dropped the ball. Highland Park, what a big break. And that kind of indicative for the Duncanville Panthers. 0-2 on the year. 
Head coach Jay Miller, of course, telling us before the game that his team has had quite a few opportunities this year, but turnovers and intercepted passes have really hurt them. Okay, first and ten from Highland Park, just underway in the opening period as King Hall sends Adam Cox in motion. Hall gives the first man through. That's Brian Glasscock, and Glasscock has a couple inside the 20 to about the 18-yard line. There you saw what King Hall does best. He fakes and runs the ball extremely well as he pulled that back out and kept it himself. Let's set the Highland Park offense for you. In the backfield, King Hall, Brian Glasscock, the senior, Rod Jones, the junior, Wide receiver, Adam Cox, Blair Oden, and Brian, uh, Brant Burnett, the tight ends. So it'll be second down and seven to go from Highland Park. Second offensive play of the game as King Hall looks over a 5-2 defensive alignment. Hall, option, wants to throw. Looking to the end zone, Mark the Highland Park defensive line. They are big and they're a good one. Gene Williams at the left tackle, left guard. Dave Richards at 6'5", 275. Rutledge, Hal Watson, and Charlie Davis round out the line. Third and seven for the Scots. At the Duncanville 18, Adam Cox wide to the left side. Just underway. And that is who Paul wants to go to. He's got Cox all alone. Running down to the far side of the football field, but not before he comes up with the first down. Well, Adam Cox had a great game last week against Sherman, gaining over 130 yards. He was wide open, turned his man around, cut to the outside, wide open, as we said. King Hall, who's had a good year passing thus far, laid the ball right on him. Chris Foreman was the man that saved the touchdown for Duncanville. Jody Thompson wide right for Highland Park as they go with a double tight end formation. First and goal at the seven. Hall to the first man through. That's Glasscock and not much doing there as he has hit and hit hard about the six yard line. Duncanville runs a 5-2. They set their nose guard on uh, either side of the center. That time they stunted to the right. Highland Park guessing it with Duncanville. And Highland Park ran into the short side of the field. Also ran right into the stunning nose guard. Jody Thompson checks out, Eddie, and Adam Cox checks in. What would you look for here? I think you might go counter option to the wide side. Adam Cox on the far side of the football field, the lone wide receiver, second and goal from the six-yard line. Option, right side, Paul, pitch out, Glasscock trying to turn the corner. He's at the five, and flag fly, and let's see what the call is. In talking to the offensive coaches before the game, they said that uh, there you see the offsides against Duncanville. But they hinted that they would be guessing early in the ball game against Duncanville uh, as Duncanville stunts on almost every play. Mark Pillsbury checking in now for Adam Cox. Uh, they may be trying to get just a little bit more beef up there on the offensive line, Eddie. Down in there tight. You know, we talked about that offensive line. Frank Beavers, uh, Don Richardson, Jim Castle off field. It. This line really compares to the 1980 crew that went to the uh, far in the state playoffs. This year, the line averages oh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 6'3 and about 240 a man. Dave Richards, the largest, uh, he came in at 280. He's down to 265. Just a junior, Hal Watson, up in the 240 range. So they have good size. Gene Williams, 230 pounds. Good size in the offensive line. Hills very wide to the right, pro set behind the young quarterback King Hall, second and goal from the three-yard line. Hall right side, gives to the second man through, that's Jones, and he is very, very close. Jones gets it just inside the one-yard line, Eddie, as he is brought down by Darrell Edwards. Just short. Now, as we talked about on the touchdown, I think you might look uh, straight up the middle again, go right behind Big Dave Richards, number 77, just to the left of the center on your screen. Third and goal from the one, opening series of the ball game. Hall, pro set behind him. Just inside, 10 minutes to go. Jones with the football, he's close. Let's see as they unpile down near the goal line. Rod Jones got the call for the second time in a row. 
And the officials are marking it very, very close to the goal line. They say no touchdown in the first crucial call of the game, Eddie. A fourth and goal from about a foot away. Great defensive play that time by David Blocklinger for uh, Duncanville. As he shot through the gap, came between uh, Hal Watson and Charlie Davis and made the play. Jody Thompson checks in. He's to the wide side of the football field. Double tight end formation, fourth and goal from the one foot line. King Hall looking at an 11-man defense. Pitches the glass top, still going. Gets on the board first tonight. And that's got to help for Highland Park. You know, they had to have some uh, misgivings about Frank Beavers not being here tonight, not coaching on the sideline. A big break and uh, a big touchdown as they took it in. David Hopkins on to attempt the point after six to nothing. Highland Park. Snap is down and good. And so is the point after. And Highland Park leads Duncanville by a score of seven to nothing. They capitalize on an early turnover. How many times have you seen it when a team's going bad, little things seem to trip you up and continue that bad momentum? That got to play on Duncanville's mind right now. They needed to get off to a good start simply if they're going to play on even terms with Highland Park on the best of days. Now you've got to wonder, will they simply fold up and this will be a runaway? So that, that's got to be a big part on Duncanville. Should be interesting, Eddie, as you mentioned, uh, getting behind early is not something you like to do against a ball club like Highland Park. And Jay Miller telling me before the football game that if his team did get behind, they would throw the football an awful lot tonight, perhaps as much as 60 or 70 percent. Well, that could be playing right into Highland Park's hands. Wayne Johnson, defensive secondary coach, has six or seven, even eight players that he substitutes back there, and he says they all have equal ability. So if Highland Park has a strength, it's in their uh, two defensive tackles and in their seven or eight uh, defensive backs. Byron Lentz, the young man who lost the kickoff earlier, is back around the goal line again as Sweeney tees it up on the 40. A slight breeze at his back as he comes down on the football, and it's another boomer. Deep into the Duncanville end zone and out of it this time as Lentz has no chance to run that one back, and Eddie, that may just be the best thing possible for the Panthers here as they try to regroup. getting to set his offensive team now. They at least get to take the field and go from their own 20-yard uh, line, Knox. We'll see what they can do with it. So Gary Bass will be the man under, opening a quarterback tonight for Coach Jay Miller's Panthers. Sends a man in motion to the near side of the football field, and Bass hands off to the first man through. He has a couple of yards out to the 23. That's Brad McKee. Oh, what a great hit by sophomore middle linebacker George C., who's in there for uh, senior linebacker Steve Todd. George just really came through and cracked that time. You'll notice Highland Park on defense playing a flex. Kenny McIntyre, the man with 9-8 speed, comes to the near side of the football field as the Panthers face a second and seven. Now Bass sends a man in motion, Jimmy Hare, to the far side of the football field. Here's the pitch, wide side. And Brad McKee, again, with running room, gets out to about the 30-yard line as flags fly. Back, Brad McKee, number 44, the ball carrier. Henry Miller brings him down. What a motion penalty, again, against Duncanville. Again, you've got to think that the little things that we talked about Certainly a fumble, not a little thing, but just dropping the ball as they did to begin the game. A motion penalty on yardage gain there. These types of things are what Duncanville has to overcome. Two previous uh, games, 74, Duncanville and Highland Park. There you see it, 35-14, the Panthers victorious. And then in 1975, Duncanville again, 14-13. Highland Park 0-2 against Duncanville entering the third contest. Second down and 11 to go for the Panthers. Dean Hill wide to the right. Kitty McIntyre on the near side of the football field. And there's another fumble. And Lenz picks it up and simply pushes forward to about the 22-yard line. Another bad handoff right there. And I'll tell you, they're having their problems in the early going, Eddie. 
I don't think we could classify that as a handoff. The uh, quarterback simply <laughs> dropped it on the ground, one dribble, right into the line. I don't know if you can work on that play. I've noticed that in the early going in professional football and college football this year, Eddie, the quarterbacks seem to be having much more trouble with that snap from center. McIntyre to the near side of the football field, third and eight for Gary Bass. And Bass, play action right side, is in trouble, wants to throw the football, and it's complete to the far side of the football field. Paul White with the catch there. White not getting the first down, though, and so Duncanville will have to kick it away. Mark Devaney on the tackle that time. Good pressure you saw by Highland Park. We talked about their strength. The uh, defensive line very quick. The linebackers and the uh, defensive backs can also move well. Mark France is on to kick the football away for Duncanville. They trail by a score of seven or nothing here in the first period. A Brian Glasscock touchdown has been the early scoring so far. Francis with not too good a kick. And it goes out of bounds at about the 48-yard line of Duncanville, Eddie. Got a flag on the play. Have to call it back and see what happens. It would not be wise to uh, let Highland Park get too far ahead. Again, Duncanville called for the penalty. Got a feeling uh, Highland Park will probably decline that. Looks like they will as their offense comes on the field. They take over and near Mark, midfield. I'm sorry, Mark Orsano telling us only a 23-yard punt off the foot of Mark Francis, so they are hurting themselves early tonight, Eddie, with mistakes. Fumbles and, and a bad punt. As we saw last year, and certainly indicative of Frank Beaver's teams, if you let them get ahead, a lot of times they'll just run right off and bury you right through the fourth quarter. Six minutes, 30 seconds to go here in the opening period from Highlander Stadium. And the Scots lead it by a score of seven to nothing. A one yard touchdown run at 849 by Brian Glasscock. The Scots converting after Duncanville fumbled the opening kickoff. So first and 10 for the Scots inside Duncanville territory. Early in the ball game, King Hall still the man under with a double tight end formation. Gives to the first man through. That's Glasscock, and he has a couple as he spins down to about the 46. Greg Serville, the first man in there for the Panthers. You'll hear a lot of him tonight. And in talking to a line coach, Don Richardson, before the game, he said Duncanville likes to slant their nose guard toward the wide side of the field. That time, Highland Park trying to guess with Duncanville and go to the short side of the field. Pillsbury to the near side of the football field. Adam Cox on the high side of your screen there. Eye formation behind King Hall. Hall looking for Cox on a deep route. Now Hall's going to have to run with it, and he is down that far sideline to about the 42, maybe the 40-yard line before he has run out of bounds. Adam Cox running it up and out, and I'll tell you, Cox has got the speed to do it, Eddie. Yeah, he really does. He only weighs like 145 pounds. Getting back to King Hall, just another in a long line of Highland Park quarterbacks. Scott Smith, Rob Morrishell, fellow by the name of McElhenney. All of these guys, uh, same characteristics. They work with Frank Beavers. You notice King on that last run made some nice moves. Looked like he was stopped two or three times. Simply gave a hip, took it away, gave a uh, juke step, and went on. Jody Thompson checks in with the play on a third and four for Highland Park. Blair Oden, the tight end on the near side of the football field. Pro set behind King Hall. And Hall gives it to Jones. Jones, left side, 40, 35, 30. And Jones is run out of bounds, finally, inside the 30-yard line at about the 28. Tony Kerry Green, the first man up for Duncanville, but not before the Scots come up with another first down, Eddie. The thing you're going to notice about Rod Jones, and the coaches look for big things from Rod Jones, he has good size. He also has excellent speed. A few years ago, a back by the name of uh, Jeff Bergeron from the Houston area reminds the Highland Park coaches a lot of Rod Jones. Three carries for 14 yards for Rod Jones so far, so he opens impressively. Hall wanting to go up top. He's got pressure. Out into the flats he goes for Pillsbury complete. Mark Pillsbury, the junior wide receiver, made a nice catch at about the 20-yard line okay. as Hall had a lot of pressure on him, Eddie. And before the game, the coaches in dissecting the Duncanville defense said their corners play very soft. And certainly that's been the case thus far tonight. 
Grant Burnett checks in along with Jody Thompson, first and 10 from the Duncanville 20-yard line. 5.21 to go here in the opening period from Highlander Stadium, 7 to nothing, Highland Park. Thompson to the far side of the football field, double tight end formation. As Hall looks at a 52 defensive alignment on the option, he goes to Jones. Jones spins, 15, and inside the 15 to the 14 goes Rod Jones. Daryl Edwards, the man on the stop, but not before Jones picks up some more yardage. You know, very close on that play to a uh, forward lateral. As a matter of fact, uh, reminiscent of a play against Irving MacArthur that was called back when King pitched to Brian Glasscock around left end. The play went for about 50 yards and a touchdown, but was called back very close to a forward lateral uh, on the last play. So it'll be second and five for Highland Park from the Duncanville 15. The Scots leading seven to nothing, trying to get more. Cox to the near side of the football field. Glasscock and Jones, the running backs. And there is a flag. Could be too much time. That indeed is the call, so they will step off five against the Scots. On the sideline, in the absence of Frank Beavers, notice Don Richardson and Randy Emery, defensive coordinator and offensive line coach, both kind of putting their heads together, talking to uh, a couple of ball players. Jody Thompson now coming in, shuttling plays. So uh, both the offense and the defense both kind of getting their shot to run the show tonight. Grant Burnett checks out as Thompson comes in. And Eddie, what would you look for here, second and 10? Probably a touchdown pass. I mean, let's just get right out <laughs> on the limb. Cox near side, Thompson far side, pro set behind Hall. And Hall straight back, looking for Cox in the flats. He's got him inside the 10. Cox bangs his way down to the five, and inside the five to about the four goes Adam Cox, the senior wide receiver. Kenny McIntyre, the man finally in there to pull him down. Just a great job of blocking that time by the offensive line also. You know, we never have really explained Frank Beavers in the hospital for uh, some uh, infection in the stomach uh, intestines. Expected to be all right, may be out next week, and we certainly hope it's not serious. King Hall now three of four for 35 yards as the Scots look at a first and goal from the four yard line, leading seven to nothing. They want more. Glasscock standing up makes it 13 to nothing as he blasts right over the middle. Touchdown, Highland Park. What a hole opened up that time by John Rutledge and Hal Watson. My goodness, you could have run through that, Knox. I think you better send out for popcorn. It's going to be a long night for Duncanville. So Hopkins into a tempt the extra point, leading 13 to nothing. And Hopkins splits the uprights to make it 14 to nothing. So with 4.09 remaining in the first period, Highland Park very impressive as they get two quick touchdowns. Well, they have been impressive, but they've also had a lot of help from Duncanville. Fumble on the kickoff, a bad punt, set them up in good field position. So with our score of 14 to nothing, 4.09 left, we'll be back right after this. There's a new world to discover at Computerland, the exciting world of personal computers. Come on in. Right now, if you buy any business system worth $3,000 or more, we'll throw in this free starter kit and four hours of free instruction. Then we'll top off the deal with a $100 coupon. Get a business deal that'll knock you over at Computerland. For all you need to discover the world of personal computers, discover Computerland. Welcome back to Highlander Stadium. Highland Park holding a 14 to nothing lead. Two long drives here by uh, Highland Park. And in the absence of Frank Beavers, both the offensive and defensive coaches putting their heads together and doing a good job. Back to you, Knox. Well, Eddie, the youngster, David Sweeney, only a junior, kicking off for the third time tonight, and we are still in the first quarter. Again, Dyron Lentz, six yards in the end zone, and he's going to come out with it, Eddie. Lentz to the 10, to the 15, and he will go no further as he is hit by Michael Lane at the 15-yard line. I'll tell you, somebody else that does a good job on defensive uh, coverage on the kickoffs. Number 32, Greg Aldridge, has made several big hits this year, and that's certainly another one. By the way, Highland Park, 71 yards offense. Duncanville, 10 yards offense thus far in the first quarter. First and 10 for the Panthers at their own 15-yard line, down 14 to nothing, and we are already 
just 10 minutes into this football game. First man through gets the football, Brad McKee, and he gets about a yard at the most. They'll give him two yards, so make it second and eight for Duncanville. Todd Bright checking back into the football game for the Scots. They so far, have had everything go their way. Second and eight for the Panthers as McIntyre comes to the near side of the football field. Bass gives to the second man through. That's McKee again, and out of the eye formation, he bangs up in there for two more yards. It'll be third and about six for Duncanville. Richard Tuma made the tackle there, senior, uh, one of the captains for the Highland Park Scots, and his lifetime ambition is to grow up, get out of high school, and be a cameraman for one of my production crews. <laughs> That's the truth. He told me last week. You produce a lot of things, we might add, so you should have plenty of work for him. I want you to watch number 23, Todd Bright. All five foot of him, they call him the shark. Bright lined up with Kenny McIntyre, who can cover this football field in 9.8 seconds. Bass, and that's who he's looking for. Lots of pressure as flags fly, and Bass is going to run. Bass to the 20, 25, 30, turns it up to the 35, and he is finally banged out of bounds by number 23, Todd Bright. I think he can call it all back, though. Looks like Duncanville holding in the interior of the offensive line. At least that would be the guess here. So you can call it all back. The third crucial mistake, apparently, of this football game thus far. Now I said Todd Bright was five foot. He's five six. I don't want him coming after me after the game. He's all of five six. But he is, he is a great football player. And Wayne Johnson, the defensive secondary coach, really likes him a lot. I can tell you this much. He and the rest of that secondary will get a real test tonight with Kenny McIntyre. Jay Miller, the head coach of the Panthers, could not say enough good things about that youngster prior to tonight's game, and they indeed will at least try to get that football to him before the evening is over. Well, I'm going to take a guess. If he throws the ball a lot, I'm going to say the Scots are going to get more than their share of uh, pickoffs. Just an observation from watching Highland Park for the last uh, couple of weeks. 1982, Highland Park versus the opposition. You can see they're way ahead in both uh, total offense and rushing yards. Third and 16 for the Duncanville Panthers. Backed up inside their 10. Bass wants to throw the football. Sets up a screen. He's got McKee. McKee gets it outside the 10 to about the 12, and that's all. And so Duncanville will have to kick the football away again. Good defense by Captain Tuma that time as he fell back off the rush and made the tackle downfield before they got a full head of steam. Brian Miller, Glenn Evans. And Eric May back around the 40 and 45 to receive this punt I want for you, Highland Park. Excuse me, Knox. I want you to watch Eric Mays if he gets the ball and return to punt over 50 yards for a touchdown last week against Sherman. Francis kicking out of his own end zone, only got a 23-yarder his first effort. Mays looking for the football, and he's hit immediately at about the 43-yard line. An excellent defensive play by number 52, Tony Albrecht. And that's how you stop big plays. Eddie, a 34-yard punt, so they are having their problems early in the game. And as we look back down the football field, towards the west end zone, we see that there is a Highland Park Scott down about the two-yard line. Trainers are out checking him out right now. It's kind of hard to see right now exactly who that is. Certainly hope it's not uh, too serious. Doug Gibbons and his staff now on the field tending. One thing uh, the coaching staff, any coaching staff, will tell you every year will be good if we can stay healthy. And certainly uh, this type of situation, not that good. Ellison Hurt, number 70. Starting defensive end is up and moving all right. Doesn't look too serious, and that's certainly certainly a good note there. 
Doug Gibbons talking to Allison as they come off the field. Ellison has had a, a great year thus far. Did not uh, start on the defensive line last year. Stepped right in. Has done a great job this year. And you are certainly glad to see that young man walk off under his own power. First and ten for the Scots from the 43-yard line of Duncanville. As Hall wants to throw the football. He's looking for Cox. Lots of pressure. Hall will have to run with it. And he is going to be dropped for about a four-yard loss. Jim Ball, the first man to get there. He had assistance. From number 74, Larry Osteen, and number 70, Daryl Edwards, as the Panthers come up with their first big defensive play of the night, Eddie. You get the feeling the guys that are calling the offensive plays this week are going to go for broke. They may, they may ask uh, Spring Beavers to stay away for a while. Looks like they're looking like a bunch of riverboat gamblers out there. Cox to the far side of the football field, Pillsbury to the near side, Proset behind King Hall, Blaro in the tight end on the near side. This time it is Jones, left side, and he's got running room. Jones, 45, Jones, 40, Jones bangs his way out of bounds at about the 36-yard line of Duncanville. Tony Green and Bill Davis finally corralling Rod Jones. But that youngster is off to an impressive early start tonight, Eddie. Well, that's kind of a variation on a draw play, just kind of a slow-developing draw. Not exactly, not exactly a draw, but... Rod Jones, you saw his good speed. Rod Jones now, five carries for 32 yards. And just another step there, and he might have gone all the way. Double tight end formation now as Odin and Brant Burnett man those positions. And Hall, reverse counter option, will keep the football 35-30. Hall, 35-30. stopping Hall from going all the way, but a big run for the senior quarterback. 27 yards for King Hall. I told you to send out for popcorn. I'll tell you, Blair Oden on the right side through a key block as Hall really sprang that option. So, first and 10 for the Scots. As we are still in the first period, they lead 14 to nothing and what more? As Jones, the senior fullback, bangs it down to about the seven, make it the six-yard line. Tony Albrecht in there to stop him for the Panthers, but not before Jones gets five. Maybe the last play of the first quarter as the clock winds down. We are now inside 15 seconds with Highland Park leading 14 to nothing. Let's see if they get one more off. Second. And six to go from the seven-yard line for Highland Park. Cox, the lone wide receiver. Option play. Hall has the football. Will cut it up inside himself. And King Hall is inside the five-yard line to about the four before he is hit by number 46, Greg Cervell. And Eddie, that is the end of the first period of play. And what a first quarter it has been for Highland Park. With our score, Highland Park 14 and Duncanville nothing, we'll be back right after this. Second quarter action, it's been all Highland Park thus far. Duncanville, lots of mistakes. Fumbled kickoff, bad punt. A good field position for Highland Park. King Hall having a field day. Adam Cox looking... Uh, to have a big night as he did last week against Sherman and uh, Brian Glasscock and uh, Rod Jones also running well. Double tight end formation as Burnett and Odin, the tight ends, are in. It'll be a third and two for Highland Park from the four yard line. Hall, option play, cuts inside. He is very close to the goal line as King Hall catches himself. He got the first down for sure. And he is very, very close to that Duncanville goal line, Eddie. That's been two straight plays when the pitch man has looked to be open. Not second guessing King Hall, but certainly Duncanville has got to play the option better. 
So it'll be a first and goal from Highland Park from the Duncanville one-yard line. Adam Cox is the far side of the football field. Pro set behind King Hall. Nine men on the defensive front for Duncanville. Hall audibling off. Option right side. Glasscock will go in standing up. As Highland Park leads it 20 to nothing. Second touchdown of the night for Brian Glasscock. The third touchdown of the night for Brian Glasscock. And by the way, I was going to say, what a great job that time by Rod Jones as he sealed off the uh, defensive cornerback that time, allowing Brian just to uh, walk into the end zone. Hopkins on to attempt the point after Eddie. And for the third time tonight, he is perfect as Highland Park with 11.27 to go in only the second period. Takes a 21 to nothing lead over Duncanville. And you have to be awfully impressed with this ball club at this stage. 2-0 coming into this football game. And already, 21 to nothing is the score. And offensively and defensively, they have made the breaks themselves. Well, the question coming into the ball game, Frank Beavers and his staff annually bring their ball club along slowly, try to peak them toward the playoffs. The question was, they've got a big game next week against Mesquite. Mesquite, the district favorite, uh, before the season started. The question was, would they be able to get up enough and play Duncanville and play well? Or would they pull back? Uh, Frank Beavers and his staff admitted that they were, weren't really going to push the kids this week and try to get them too high for Duncanville. They knew they had a better club coming in, but there's always that chance of an upset. Apparently, the kids have answered it themselves. Specialty teams have done an excellent job so far for Highland Park tonight, causing one turnover, a big one in the opening moments of the game. So keep your eye on some of the youngsters as Sweeney again gets a boomer off into the wind. It is Lentz at the five-yard line. Lentz to the 10, has blocking. Lentz to the 20, and he slivers up to about the 25-yard line before he is hit by number 80, Tommy Harrington, and number 41, Forrest Baldwin. A couple of youngsters impressing folks here in the early going. Did you notice the first man down that time? Number 12, uh, Eric Mays. Eric is the second team quarterback. He's the first team punt returner, the first team kickoff man. He also goes down on kickoffs, and he is perhaps the most exciting ball player on the Highland Park team this year. Henry Miller calling the defensive alignment for Coach Frank Beaver's team on the field tonight. I'm sure the signals are coming from the sideline, but that youngster with some big responsibility. Running play, left side of the football field and number 24, Brad Chapman doesn't have a whole lot of running room out there as he comes up with maybe one, maybe two on the play, Eddie. Good play that time by Glenn Evans. Brian Miller also in on the play. As we said, the Highland Park defensive backs really an excellent group. Wayne Johnson says he can put a lot of people that can play back there. 21 to nothing, Highland Park. Only the second quarter in the Scots. Well, they have looked excellent in the early going tonight. Have a question on the field between the uh, referees. Eddie, it is interesting that we have not seen Billy Banks tonight. Jay Miller saying that if his club got behind early that he would begin to alternate his quarterbacks, but so far it has been all Gary Bass for the Panthers. Well, we talk about early. This is still really early. You're talking about right at the start of the second quarter. So I don't think that Duncanville's even had time to catch their breath. So maybe now <laughs> uh, Jay Miller can go back in. By the way, Coach Miller had a great deal of success winning back-to-back -back state uh, baseball championships at Duncanville before assuming the Duncanville job. And although they haven't had the success that he wanted on the football side of things, he is a good, good coach, a, a good guy. Second and eight for the Panthers. As Hare comes in motion, and McKee to the near side of the football field has running room up to about the 30-yard line. It'll be a gain of about two and a half on the play, so it'll bring up another third down play for the Duncanville Panthers. And Eddie, you know they'd like to make this one because Highland Park has been so awesome in the early going on offense tonight. I'll tell you what was impressive on that last play. The guy did not make the tackle, but number 35, Henry Miller, was out on the wide side of the field. He chased the ball all the way to the other side. Henry Miller has been the uh, defensive player of the week for Highland Park the last two weeks. 
Chapman McKee are the running backs as Dean Hill goes in motion and that is who they're looking for and over everybody's head goes the pass as Gary Bass simply had to unload it. He had a lot of pressure on him that time. Blitz that time. Brian Miller came in. Some of your statistics in the first quarter. Duncanville, nine yards rushing, seven yards passing, 18 total yards. Highland Park, rushing for 81, passing for 85, a total of 116. Also on the last play, Richard Tuma, right in the quarterback's face. So fourth down, and the Panthers will have to kick it away again. Eric May standing back and around the 30-yard line of Highland Park as Francis gets a good snap, but another poor kick to the near side of the football field, and again, it goes out of bounds at about the 47, maybe the 48-yard line, Eddie. A fair catch by David Hopkins. Unfortunately, he was in row four. A 22-yard kick to go along with that 23-yard kick earlier, and I'll tell you, they are having problems in the kicking game early. And it looks like uh, Eric Mays into the ball game. The question now, will he be at quarterback or is he at uh, running back? King Hall uh, coming back at quarterback. So Eric Mays, number 12, comes in at running back. He shares time with Brian Glasscock, although Glasscock, the senior, is the uh, designated starter. So Mays and Jones, the running back, behind King Hall. Double tight end formation. Option play, and it comes to Mays. Mays to the 50, and inside Duncan, Duncanville territory goes Eric Mays to about the 49. Greg Serville, the first man to meet him there. I tell you, we talked with Eric after last week's game against Sherman. You do have to appreciate uh, how candid he was. I asked him, you do everything on the field. Uh, you split time at the running back. You're a second team quarterback. What do you like to do? He said, I want to be a quarterback. Second down and seven yards to go for the Scots at the Duncanville 49. They lead it 21 to nothing as Pillsbury goes in motion. Double tight end alignment. Counter option play, and Hall keeps it himself. Hall to the 45, Hall to the 40, and inside the 40 to the 39-yard line goes the senior quarterback, King Hall, as he gets the first down. Chris Foreman was the man that finally knocked him off his feet. My gosh, David Richards, all 6'5", 270 pounds of him, pull that time. Greg Serville, the linebacker, 150 pounds for Duncanville, came shooting through. And David just sat on him. I'm telling you, he knocked him right on the ground. 21 to nothing, Highland Park, and they want more. Cox to the near side of the football field. Thompson to the far side. Again, counter option. Eric Mays, 40. Eric Mays, 35. Eric Mays to about the 33-yard line. And the senior running back gets six, maybe seven on the play. Tony Albrack was the man that finally stopped him for Duncanville. Let's check the rushing stats for King Hall. We told you he's in a long line of great rushers out of Highland Park. Tonight, uh, eight carries, four 48 yards. Pillsbury, the lone wide receiver for the Scots as they are faced with a second down and three from the Duncanville 33. Again, Hall to the first man through Eric Mays. And the senior running back pounds it inside the 30 to about the 27 of Duncanville for another impressive game. Do you know something I don't know? Either Eric got promoted or he's still a junior. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll call him a junior unless we're going to graduate him early, in which, which case uh, Frank Beavers will probably have to go back in the hospital. <laughs> Adam Cox to the near side of the football field. Eddie, just inside eight minutes to go here in the second period. And King Hall wanting more, back to throw. Hall looking for a receiver into the corner of the end zone. He's going for Blair Oden and overthrows him down deep. Blair Oden was open momentarily, but then the coverage finally caught up with him. Also might have been a mix up on the receivers that time. Jody Thompson and Blair Oden both in the same vicinity. King Hall, we talked about his passing. He's three of five, 35 yards on the night. Uh, quite accurate. King has had a good season thus far, three games or two and a half games deep into the season of throwing the ball. Great success last week against Sherman. Brant Burnett checks into the football game. Again, double tight end alignment for Highland Park. Second down and 10 from the 28-yard line of Duncanville. Reverse option, Hall will keep it himself, and Hall is to about the 24-yard line before he is finally tripped off his feet by Larry Osteen. 
and number 14, Todd Akins. Talking with Doug Gibbons, trainer for Highland Park the other day, he said Brian uh, uh, King Hall, not Brian Hall, the ex-Texas Tech character, King Hall reminds him awful lot of Scott Smith, who played quarterback here at Highland Park, then went on to Baylor. Now a coach, uh, if I'm not mistaken, at North Texas State. Third down and six for the Scots from the 24. And here he comes, Jones, left side, Jones 15, Jones 10, Jones 5, and Jones goes in, standing up for Highland Park. A 24-yard run for Rod Jones as Highland Park makes it 27 to nothing. We told you about Rod. He's big. The coaches expect a lot out of him. And they say if he stays healthy, he is going to be a great player. Park impressive early as Hopkins is on to attempt his fourth point after try and David Hopkins splits the uprights again to make it Highland Park 28 and Duncan Bill nothing. Some excellent blocking that time around the left side number 77 David Richards and number 75 Gene Williams throwing key blocks as Rod Jones, the youngster, sprints 24 yards. And Eddie, you have to be impressed with Highland Park. Again, I keep repeating this, but how often do you see a team put four touchdowns on the scoreboard this quickly? Yeah, they're having a good night. And again, I'm really surprised because as we've talked about, Highland Park, not a club that really gets up for, how can we say this and not sound too derogatory, for a school that's not quite up to par uh, with the program that Highland Park has, but they they really seem to be fired up tonight. I'm really a little surprised because I thought they'd be looking just a little more ahead to Mesquite. Well, the youngster, Dyron Lentz, who has had an ominous start tonight, is back around his own five-yard line to receive this kickoff for Duncanville. And Switch Sweeney will again kick off from his own 40-yard line, he is kicking into about a 5 to 10 mile an hour breeze from the east. And again, it will be Lentz. Lentz at the 5, to the 10, to the 15. Cuts back to the 20. And Lentz spins out to about the 23-yard line before he is hit by Chuck Hutchkinson. Hutchkinson with some help that time. From number 42, David Hopkins, and number 41, Forrest Baldwin. Excellent job of coverage by the specialty team. i got to tell you what. The man nearly fumbled that ball about three times. If he doesn't hold the ball a little tighter, you're going to see a lot more fumbles down there. I guarantee you, Highland Park will take the ball away from him. So first and ten for Duncanville. They trail 28 to nothing. We are in the second period, and Bass wants to throw it. Play action, left side. Gary Bass going out into the flats, complete to Todd Atkins, and Atkins has run out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. Impressive throw for the youngster considering all the pressure he had on him and considering he was going the opposite way. By the opposite way, Eddie, of course, I mean to the left side since he is a right-handed quarterback. Of course. So, second and two for the Duncanville Panthers. Dyron Lentz to the near side of the football field. They trail 28 to nothing, and up the middle goes McKee as he is very near the first down. Philip Worthen in on the stop. Had assistance from Henry Miller, and the defense looks awful good, too, Eddie. Good play that time also by Gabriel De La Garza, who moved in from Mexico just before football season. Had a brother play here, Manuel De La Garza, a few years ago, and he is quite a, a good-looking football player, 6'1 and 215. Rusty Anderson checks in on defense for Highland Park. It's a third and short yardage, maybe a foot. McKee, left side, gets the call. It is very, very close. I believe he got it, Eddie. Good play that time by Philip Worthen, the right defensive tackle. He's flexed up, broke through and made the play, but I think you're right. Uh, about a half a yard, he made the first down. McKee now with four carries for five yards tonight. Indicative of the great job the defense is doing also. Is he the leading rusher? First and ten for the Panthers from their own 33-yard line. Bass looking to throw quickly. 
going deep. And it's over the head of number 81, Dyron Lenz, down there. You know, the toughest job in the stadium would be to go in at halftime would be the fellow that had to make the pep talk at halftime. I think we're going to send old-time Channel 4 sportscaster Mark Orestano down there to get him pumped up at halftime. Crack analyst. Second and 10 for the Panthers. They trail 28 to nothing. We are only in the second period. 5.55 to go. And Bass looking to throw. Play action right side. Bass in trouble. He is going to go down. The first man there was number 64, Rusty Anderson. And then a whole bunch of folks showed up. Number 82, Gabriel De La Garza. And number 21, Brian Miller. And Anderson was the first man in to say hello. I just started flinching because Brian Miller blitzed all the way from his right uh, cornerback position that time or, uh, on the right side of the field from his safety position, chased the quarterback, and the quarterback turned right around into him. Makes you want to flinch. Brad McKee, the leading rusher, checks out for the Panthers. They are faced with third, well, just third and long yardage. Pitch out left side. And that's McIntyre trying to turn the corner. McIntyre picks up about eight, maybe nine, before he is run out of bounds on the far side of the football field. Chuck Hutchinson along with Brian Miller running the speedster out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. And again, they will have to kick it away. And the shark, Todd Bright, upset with himself, tried to take away some of the interference and found nothing but turf in front of him. Number 23, Todd Bright. Fourth and 14 from the 28-yard line, and Francis in to kick it away again. Eric May standing at about his own 30. Francis has had some problems in the early going tonight. Line drive kick this time, and Mays will have a chance to return it. Mays reverses field. Mays 35, Mays 40. Spins his way up across the 40 to about the 43. And for Eric Mays, a 10-yard return before finally being wrapped up by Paul White. A 38-yard punt. The best of the evening so far for the young punter, Mark Francis. And I told you he had a lot of moves, didn't I, Eric Mays? Ten-yard return, a lot of moves. Very gutty young ball player. I think they're going to go long to Adam Cox. I mean, let's just get right out on the limb. What do you think? 4.56 left to go here in the second period. 28 to nothing, Highland Park. And let's see if they go for more. Thompson to the near side of the football field. And King Hall looking for Thompson. Comes out in the flats. He's got him on a diving catch at about the 49-yard line. And how about that, Eddie? <laughs> Duncan has got to be wondering how about that. 28 points up. And these guys come out throwing the ball. Just a simple down and out route for the youngster that time. And Jody Thompson with a sliding catch. And I have to tell you one thing. The passing running game have just simply been excellent tonight. And only the third game of the year for the Highland Park Scots. Clock inside four and a half minutes now. Second down, short yardage for the Scots. Double tight end formation. Counter handoff, and Eric May bangs his way down inside the 45 to about the 43, where he's hit by Andy Goza, but not before Mays gets the first down at the Duncanville 43. Think about this. You know the Mesquite coaches have got to be in the stadium scouting Highland Park tonight. Do they prepare for Frank Beavers, or do they prepare for Don Richardson? Huh? <laughs> Answer me that one. Well, I'll tell you, they have to be impressed because Highland Park has done nothing wrong here tonight. Bill's very near side, Cox far side. Odin, the tight end, option right side, Hall, looking for Cox deep. Adam Cox, the speedster, and he drops the football inside the 20 at about the 15-yard line. Cox had Kenny McIntyre beat, and when you beat Kenny McIntyre, you're beating somebody who has excellent speed. Adam Cox also was just about the best speed on the Holland Park team, though. This would be a good matchup. Well, there is no doubt that Highland Park feels there are some things they still need to work on tonight, despite this big lead, Eddie. Apparently wanting to keep momentum on their side and not let these, let these group of youngsters get complacent. The movement at the line of scrimmage as flags fly, and we'll have to see what the call is. What an offsides on Duncanville. Nose guard that time, just a little over anxious. Some excellent blocking on that front wall here tonight. 
Yeah, we might mention those guys. John Rutledge, Gene Williams, Charlie Davis, Hal Watson. I promised Gene Williams I'd get his name in. Gene Gene, the dancing machine. <laughs> and there's a story behind that. Second and five for the Scots from the 39-yard line of Duncanville. Cox near side. Hall, reverse counter pitch. Eric May cuts it up to about the 40 for a loss of one. And that was one of the few times tonight that Duncanville has penetrated. Kenny McIntyre coming up from his cornerback position to make the play. That was a great play, great defensive play. It was a nice play by King to get the ball uh, pitched out quickly. Grant Burnett checks into the football game as Pillsbury goes to the far side. Third and six, what do you look for here, Eddie? Uh, let's go uh, counter option, how's that? Third and six from the 40-yard line, and counter option it is as King Hall keeps the football and spins back to about the line of scrimmage. Hall with no gain on the play, so it'll be a fourth down for the Highland Park Scots as Tony Albrecht was the man in there on the stop. I told you we should have passed. <laughs> so for the first time tonight, we will see the Highland Park punting unit and Ward Wilson. Wilson standing at about the 45-yard line of Highland Park. Gets a good snap from center. The left-handed, left-footed kicker gets it away. And this is a beauty. Inside the 10, inside the 5. And they're going to simply watch it roll inside the 5 as Warren Smith downs it at about the 2-yard line. A 37-yard kick for Ward Wilson. With our score, Highland Park 28 and Duncanville nothing. We'll be back right after this. It takes years of practice and dedication to be the best. That's a lesson well learned at Lone Star Cadillac. We've concentrated on every detail of our service, worked hard to give you a wider selection of new Cadillacs in a downtown location that's in tune with your needs. Experience is the key. After nearly 50 years, you can depend on Lone Star Cadillac for an excellent performance every time. There's the pitch to McKee. McKee tries to cut it up inside, and he gets to about the five. What a great play by Richard Tuma. Left defensive tackle, flexed back off the line of scrimmage that time, went straight down the line of scrimmage. The running back cut back, and Richard was there. Give him a pickup of one on the play, Eddie. That'll bring up a third down and seven to go. Just under a minute and a half to go here in the first period as the officials take a timeout. Got a player injured down there. <laughs> Deep in the huddle, you can't see him now. Now you can see uh, the injured player for the Duncanville Panthers. Brad McKee is injured. That would be a big loss for Duncanville. Both the bands from Duncanville High School and Miles Park will be performing for your entertainment. They both have outstanding. You know, this sets up an interesting play. Third down and seven yards. Highland Park's strength is rushing the passer. They have quick uh, defensive linemen. So the quarterback won't have a lot of time to throw if he does indeed throw the ball. You might look for an interception should Duncanville decide to put the ball up. Interesting statistic. Duncanville, 13 yards rushing. Highland Park, 140 yards rushing almost at halftime here. 13 yards rushing. Some of the youngsters checking in now defensively for the Scots. Mike Blaze, number 44 in there. 
It's a third and seven passing situation probably for Duncanville as they are down 28 to nothing. No, they go straight ahead. And this is the youngster Brad Chapman bursting out over the 10 to about the 15 yard line and that could be a first down. It is a first down as they move the chains, Eddie. Somebody else looking for a pass that time. Robert Turner and Philip Worthen just happened to be split just a bit. And the runner through for a first down. So first and 10 for the Panthers. Just under a minute to go here in the first period as the clock is winding down. They trail 28 to nothing. Handoff, first man through, running room, right side, as Todd Atkins gets it across the 20 to about the 23. Richard Tuma disgusted with himself. He ran right by the ball carrier that time. Ball carrier coming this side, Richard shaking his head. <laughs> Should have time for possibly one more play. Duncanville apparently just content to run out the clock, Eddie. Scott's up by 28 points. Richard Tuma's talking to himself. Second down and two for the Panthers. Ten seconds to go in the first half. And Bass now will look for Kenny McIntyre, and it is almost intercepted. McIntyre, the speedster, was trying to run an, a go route, but number 30 for the Scots, David Vocal, almost picked it off. What do you think? Go downtown on this play? I mean, you've been asking me all night. What do you think? Obviously, I think if you throw it deep, the worst you can come out with is an interception for the touchdown. <laughs> so why not? <laughs> Should be the final play of the first half. Bass gives to his running back around the left side, Brad Chapman. And Chapman runs out of bounds at about the 32-yard line. And that will be the final play of the first half. And what a first half it has been. Highland Park getting two touchdowns in the first quarter. Two more in the second quarter. And our halftime score is Highland Park 28 and Duncanville nothing. We'll be back right after this. It takes years of practice and dedication to be the best. That's a lesson well learned at Lone Star Cadillac. We've concentrated on every detail of our service worked hard to give you a wider selection of new Cadillacs in a downtown location that's in tune with your needs. Experience is the key. After nearly 50 years, you can depend on Lone Star Cadillac for an excellent performance every time. get to see the Holland Park Band under the direction of Don Theodi as they'll make their home debut tonight.
sharp hardware. J.P. Summers Incorporated Construction and Home Building. Hank Dickerson and Company Realtors. And Murray Savings. Murray Savings was the first in Dallas to introduce an interest-earning checking account. Make Murray Savings part of your financial game plan. Welcome to the Frank Beaver Show, along with Coach Beavers. I'm Eddie Clinton. Big game against Mesquite. I cannot remember since I've been watching Highland Park. Guys all come together this early in the season. Well, normally we don't have to come together quite this early, but uh, unfortunately this year we had to uh, get our kids up real early, and hopefully that uh, this will help us in uh, gathering a little poise a little bit earlier than normal in, uh, in preparation for later on district play. Well, it's a lot of fun to hook up against a class guy like Tommy Hudsmith, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. And, of course, it's sad uh, to see a good team like Mesquite get beat. But this year in uh, Texas high school playoffs, two teams have the opportunity to, to uh, go to the playoffs, and uh, this will probably keep them alive. King Hall, <clears throat> good ball game. Oh, King, he's continued to prove uh, he'll get better. Um, he's got a lot of poise, a lot of confidence. He really believes in himself. He's very cool, and uh, he'll continue to improve. Did you think the offensive line was as, as top-notch as you expected them to be this early in the year? No, I didn't expect us to be quite this good uh, as w where we are right now. Of course, we have a couple guys that's not there yet, and uh, hopefully they'll get there soon. Uh, 